everyone! We are finally on Prince Edward Island. It was such a beautiful day. We stopped at St. Andrews by the Sea and had lunch there and walked out on the pier and just admired the downtown area. And I went shopping. I love to get beautiful materials to put in my book photos on Instagram. So I found this cute one with these little toadstools and robins. And then this one, I don't know if those are dormice or gerbils, but I just thought they were so beautiful. And then my mom also got some material. She went for this one. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a little blue jay. And, and then we continued on and we went to St. John's, which has the reversing rapids. So. The, the river pushes back against the tides of the ocean and it's kind of fantastic to see. But we didn't see it, we just saw that we were there at low tide unfortunately and we had missed it by an hour and a half so we'll try to hit it on the way back. We, by the time we got to Confederation Bridge, which is the bridge where you cross onto PEI, it was sunset. So we crossed the bridge as the sun was pretty low in the skies and then we had to drive through the country roads of PEI in the dark. <laughs> But we made it to our little cottage. It's a self-catering cottage, so we made ourselves some dinner and I am just about to read a little bit and I already called my son and my husband to say goodnight. And yeah, I'm gonna drink my tea and, and read one of my books. I brought Goodbye Mr. Chips, My Nancy Drew and Halloween Party. So I'm gonna sign off and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning everyone! I woke up this morning to the most beautiful sound of the wind rushing through the trees and geese flying south for the winter. It was just lovely. I'm really loving this little cottage that we rented. Um, I'm just waiting for my mom to finish up and then we are heading out for breakfast and then on to Green Gables.
I wonder what he's eating. Snake. <laughs> what snake? Oh, oh well, wait a minute. There's a snake right there. Oh. It's a flattened dead frog, I think. Oh. Maybe that's that's what it looks like. I thought it was, but it's the big one. Where'd you go? You disappeared. I don't like that. He's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi everyone! Well, I am back at home in Maine. It's actually a couple of weeks later. Uh, my mom went back to her home in New Mexico and we went to Ontario, to Guelph, Ontario, to spend Canadian Thanksgiving with my husband's family and had a lovely time there. And an interesting thing is that you can actually see uh, L.M. Montgomery's journals at the University of Guelph. However, I didn't have time to go. Our days were full of family activities that I just had to save it for another time, but I thought I would mention that in case anyone is interested. We had our wallpaper put up, and so I'm excited about that. I'm going to feature it more in future videos. It's just in front of me. My husband's going to build me a bookshelf. I have a little built-in one that holds my little books behind me, but in front of me I'm, I'm hoping to have a beautiful bookshelf one day that can be in the background, and then you'll see more of the wallpaper then. Here's the wallpaper that I have on the walls, a little close-up. It's a ton of cicadas, and I just thought it was so cool because when I go visit my dad in Texas, the cicadas are just singing and calling at night, and so whenever I think of cicadas, I think of Texas, so I thought this would be really cool. And my husband also spent a lot of time in Texas, so it's kind of our connection. It's from a company called Grow House Grow out of Brooklyn, New York. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. I'm enjoying my lemongrass chai. My mom has got me really drinking these things. They're nature's guru and they have lemongrass chai and so many wonderful cool flavors and they're really yummy and I've been enjoying them. And I bought this mug a couple of years ago when I first went to Green Gables. Um, I would say it was probably about four years ago that I paid a, a trip out there. I've got a little chip in it. I don't know if you can see, but I still love my mug. And I just wanted to jump on here and close out this video and tell you a little bit more about that day that we were on Prince Edward Island. We went to um, Green Gables itself, which was the home of Montgomery's elderly cousins, who she used to go visit all the time because all she had to do was cross through what they now call the haunted woods. And so she'd go and spend some lovely days with her cousins sometimes. It was really nice to see the house. It was kind of embellished a little bit to look like it was described in the book. And I don't know if you saw in the video, you could see the raspberry cordial and the dress with the puff sleeves and such. And then after Green Gables, we grabbed some chai and then we headed to where Ella Montgomery grew up with her grandparents. So unfortunately, Lucy Maud, Montgomery's mom passed away when she was almost two, just before the age of two. And so she went to go live with her maternal grandparents. And it's actually also where she wrote Anna Green Gables. So that would have been the second location. And then the third place we went to was L.M. Montgomery's birthplace, which was amazing to see where she was born and the room she was born in and the, and the room she occupied from infancy and in early toddler years. So that was pretty cool to see. And then finally we went out to, I think it's called Park Corner. It's Silverbush Park Corner. I'm not quite sure. We didn't have a really great visit there. It was a lovely place, but we actually spent most of the time outdoors because it was full of tourists. And yeah, there's a tip. If you do go to Prince Edward Island, get busy early because the cruise ships come in and then you get a lot of people around you. Luckily, when we got to Green Gables, it was before the cruise ships had arrived. So we had some nice time where there was hardly any people around. I did duck inside the gift shop and I saw those stained glass windows. And I think I read somewhere that Lucy Maud Montgomery, when she was a little girl, was with her grandmother at church and asked her grandmother where her mother is. And her mother pointed up and said, she's up there. And Lucy looked at, at the stained glass windows and said, well, why don't we just go get her? <laughs> Which I thought was really sweet and kind of sad and sweet. You could also see the Lake of Shining Waters, which was the lake that, you know, Lucy Maud Montgomery used in Anna Green Gables, which was really cool to see. And then after that, we just drove along the coastline, stopping at points, looking and walking down to the beach. And it was just so nice. The wind was crazy, of course, but and it was really amazing. And on the way back, we stopped at La Prea Falls and then made our way back home. So I wanted to quickly show you a couple of things that I bought when I was on Prince Edward Island. Oh, before I continue, I also wanted to say that my mom ended up giving me that um, material that she bought, which was so sweet. So I hung it up in the window. I kind of jerry-rigged it with my husband's help. 
into the window so that you could see it. So anyway, thank you, Mom. So the first thing I bought was at the Ella Montgomery Birthplace, and it's Maud by Melanie J. Fishbane. And it's published by Penguin Teen Canada in 2017. And I love the way that the author organized it because she, she organized it into several books and each book is called Maud of Cavendish or Maud of uh, Prince Albert or Maud of the Island. So I thought that was really clever. It also has all the people in her social circle and her family and it has family trees and everything listed out. So that makes it really cool and easy to read. If you purchase something at one of the Ella Montgomery sites, you get some stamps. So there's the stamps that they did for me. So there's Ella Montgomery signature and then there's the a stamp of the birthplace. Ella Montgomery's birthplace is where she lived from her birth, which was November 30th, 1874, before her mother died of tuberculosis when she was 21 months old and then she moved to her grandparents' house and stayed with them for about half of her life. At one point, she did go and stay with her father who had moved out west, but she wasn't happy there. She didn't really get along with her stepmother from what I understand, so she ended up coming back to PEI after a little bit. And anyway, so I'm very excited to read this and find out more. I'm about two chapters in now. I also bought these postcards while I was at her grandparents' house visiting, which is also where she wrote Anna Green Gables. And I put these in order of publication. These are the original covers of the first editions of these books on these postcards. We have Emily of New Moon, and then Emily Climbs. And then before she wrote the third Emily, she actually wrote The Blue Castle which I thought was such a good book. I read it recently. And then Emily's Quest is the third book in the Emily series. And then she published Magic for Marigold. I can't wait to read some of these books. I've, I've only read the Anna Green Gables and, and Blue Castle. Pat of Silverbush. And then I tried to find Jane of Lantern Hill, but they didn't have it, so I'll put it I'll put it up there for you so you can see what the original uh, cover would have looked like. Another book that I've been dipping in and out of that I've actually picked up from my local library is The Landscapes of Anne of Green Gables by Catherine Reed. And I took the cover off so I could show you the, the actual book cover, which I think was so pretty, but I've really been enjoying this one. I used it before we traveled out to Prince Edward Island so that I could learn more about the Anne of Green Gables sites before we visited. And I found some very interesting things in it. For one thing I found out is that canola, which they use to make canola oil, is grown on Prince Edward Island. So that was pretty cool. And just learning all the places where Lucy Maud Montgomery visited and lived and that inspired Anna Green Gables was super interesting. So I really enjoyed this one. Then I've also been reading Looking for Anna Green Gables, The Story of Ellen Montgomery and Her Literary Classic by Irene Gamble. And it's Ellen Montgomery's life as looked at it from the lens of Anna Green Gables, the things in her life that would have inspired her to write Anna Green Gables. I also found it interesting for my purposes is they discuss the original illustrators of the Anna Green Gables and the original covers, like I just showed you the postcards. George Gibbs, who is the illustrator of all those Gibson girls in January of 1905 for a magazine called The Delineator, he had an illustration in there and they ended up using that illustration for the original cover of Anna Green Gables, which is this one right here. I love looking at annotated versions of the classics or whatever classic I'm covering because there's so much information. The original illustrators of Anna Green Gables are M.A. and W.A.J. Klaus. So this one has those, but it also has early illustrators of Anna Green Gables such as Sybil Tauza. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. So uh, annotated versions are always wonderful and this one's a really good one. I really liked it. And then I've been dipping in and out of this one. It's called House of Dreams. It's written by Liz Rosenberg and it's illustrated. It's illustrated by Julie Morstadt and I'll show you an illustration real quick. I thought that was really cute. 
What's unique about this one is that it is one of the first books about Ellen Montgomery's life written for young adults that does discuss um, some of the mystery surrounding Ellen Montgomery's death. She overdosed, but we're not really sure if she, it was intentional or accidental. In this book, it really talks about what might have happened in such a gentle way. I haven't read it all yet, I just peeked at the end. I came across this part that I thought was so pretty and I just had to read it to you guys. Often sad, Maud provided laughter and joy for others. She was passionately loving and passionately beloved. Her friendships were deep and enduring. She, who married late and feared she would never have any sort of domestic happiness, raised two sons. She witnessed snowstorms and sun showers, sunrises and new moons. She claimed she would remember even into the halls of eternity. Maud found life beautiful to the very end. There were things to marvel at and to love. Perfect happiness I have never had, never will have, she confided to her journal. Yet, there have been, after all, many wonderful and exquisite hours in my life. So anyway, I just had to read that to you because I thought that was really pretty that I saw at the end there of the book. And then real quick before I go, I wanted to show you two illustrated versions. One that I love, it's an adapted version and it was waiting for me when we came back from our trip. And that's the baby lit version of Anna Green Gables. I always love these illustrations so much. <laughs> I just think that they're great. This is one of my favorite adapted versions. So I wanted to show that to you real quick. I wanted to show you this one because it's not something that I can really show off on Instagram. So I wanted to show you the interior illustrations because I think they're darling. I think this was published in the 1940s, if I'm not mistaken. But, and it's by Hilton Hassel is the illustrator. This is when Anne hands it to Mrs. Lind. And then we have when Diana and Anne jump on Mrs. Barry. And then Diana is in danger of losing her piano lesson. And then we have, of course, the most humiliating and embarrassing moment of the whole book when Anne's playing the lily maid and she gets stuck in the river. And of course, Gilbert Blythe comes along of all people. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> my favorite part anyway it wasn't really pretty to look at so I just thought let me show this to you on YouTube because then I can talk about it at the same time and so I'm also in the middle of creating a blog post about the illustrators of Anna Green Gables and there's a lot of them some of them I showed in this video already those are the ones that I just own and I had on hand since recording this video I've also picked up a ton at the library and I've had a few that I ordered that are coming and I think I'm still waiting for four more there's a lot of illustrators of Anna Green Gables so I'm hoping to have that done by the end of October so check the description box below if you're watching this after October there should be a link if not if you go to waterbearreads.com and sign up for my newsletter I'll let you know you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook and I'll let you know as soon as it's up we had such a good time and I had such a good time making this. I hope to do another one in the winter. I think I have a place in mind that I'm going to set out for. So look for that in a couple of months. I hope you continue to have a wonderful October and I will talk to you soon. Bye.